Hi, this is Ben Brownlee with Boris Effect, and I'm going to take you through a quick look at what's new in Silhouette 2021. Silhouette 2021 is now available as a plugin for Adobe and OFX. This means the fully featured interface for Roto, Paint, and Compositing can now be directly launched from industry standard VFX applications. This opens up the entire Silhouette node based workflow for you, and you can even share projects between the standalone and plugin versions. The new Lens Correction node builds on share technology from Mocha Pro to calibrate and correct for lens distortion in your images. This makes tasks like painting on wide angle footage much simpler. Uh, instead of having to think about curved lines for cloning, you can just paint straight, then invert the distortion to fit perfectly onto your original image. The DOD auto updates so you don't have to worry about losing pixels. Silhouette's leading Roto tools have been honed even further in this latest release, including new tools such as brush reshape and the new editing features like point groups, point collapse, and distribute. Brush reshape builds on one of my favorite recent Roto editions, the magnetic reshape tool. It uses a circular brush to simultaneously select and move points, by default using the magnetic reshape behavior. The brush size is controlled just as you would any other brush in Silhouette, and it means fewer clicks and a more instinctive way of moving control points, whilst keeping the animation smooth and natural. You can now assign control points to groups. Here, I'll add the top of this shape into group one and the bottom points into group two. I can use the context menu or the same keyboard shortcut I used to save my brushes in the paint node. I'll move between selections of points with simple keyboard shortcuts, Alt and the number. Uh, again, just like switching through saved paintbrushes. This means I don't have to manually drag select points anymore. Again, fewer clicks to do the job. There are of course many other enhancements based on artist feedback, not least point collapse and distribute for when your shape suddenly needs to get a lot simpler or more complex again. There's split shape that works similarly to splitting a clip in two when doing video editing. Uh, this is useful to limit the amount of effort when the nature of your shape changes midway through. For example, the shape gets more complex at this point. So I split it and I'll just leave the simple part already finished. No need to go back and change already rotoed keyframes. Also look at the UI improvements that help you keep track of where your shapes are and what they're doing visually on the timeline. Colors and shade on the timeline allow me to easily see particular shapes and when they're active. Weighted multiframe enhances the current multiframe ability to correct multiple keyframes simultaneously. Traditionally, this would make corrections ripple across the entire keyframe range. Uh, see here, as all the keyframes move in unison. Weighted multiframe allows me to set fade in and fade out areas, which will weight adjustments to selected areas on the timeline. Very useful for directly adjusting tracking data that begins to slip, or for adding natural looking corrections to roto splines that are already densely keyframed. Roto artists and supervisors are going to appreciate the new roto review and approval improvements. Notes assigned to objects like shapes, layers, and trackers can be displayed in the viewer. And this makes it much easier for artists to see and act on the notes given by their supervisors. I enjoy order in my work, and there have been a large number of interface improvements around the node tree and general UI. The highlights for me start with the dot and note nodes. These are a couple of great utility nodes. Dot allows me to add compact null nodes into my tree, helping me to add structure. I can alt click on a line to add a dot and alt click from the dot to add another output. Much less spaghetti in my tree. Notes allow me to add a reminder to my tree to help me keep track of tasks I still need to do. 
or I can use them to create a color background to easily identify nodes in a more complex composite. Combine this with the regular node grouping and the new node coloring and node alignment features, and my tree looks a lot more uncluttered. This is great for me when I revisit a project, or especially when sharing projects between different people. Paint improvements include clone source masking to use the alpha when cloning. Uh, this works whatever your paint source. And a more artist friendly color picker. This makes hunting for the right color faster with fewer clicks. As you can tell, I am very excited about this new release. The Silhouette plugin and new flexible pricing options let Silhouette fit firmly in many more workflows. And for functionality, this is very much an artist focused update, giving you new tools and interface improvements to make your Silhouette work less about clicking and more about creating. Learn more about Silhouette 2021, upgrade pricing, and watch our Silhouette video tutorials all at borisoffects.com.